Sports Weekend, we got 81. 612-1606. Producer Crocker, V-38, August 1381. Playback TBA, hold the tape, please. Peter in the time of 9.13. The St. John's Regatta on Lake Kitty Vitty is 155 years old. Not all years are the same, and as every St. John's man worth his salt can tell you, the year that mattered most was 1901. In Saxon's old room, Peter with the record 9.13. The talk of the tavern was a team of strapping fishermen from Outer Cove near St. John's. The six fishermen rowed the course that year in nine minutes, 13 and four-fifths seconds. For 80 years, the record stood unassailed, many thought unassailable. The course must have been shorter, frustrated oarsmen would argue, or the shells must have been lighter. The 913 record stalked local regatta hands like an unyielding ghost. 6 a.m. August 5th, the weather station at St. John's Airport. These men have a heavy responsibility. The regatta committee may be the only unelected body in Canada empowered to declare a one-day holiday for an entire city. Tropical storm Sydney seems to be worrying most people, but it's right now situated about 150 miles south-southeast of Cape Race. In Newfoundland, people like their holidays on fine days. Give us some light northeasterly winds as it passes late this afternoon. Early morning pond conditions are just about ideal. By 8.30, people are pulling their cars tight to the shoreline. There's a feeling abroad that this won't be an ordinary regatta. The renewed excitement for this year's event has a couple of sources. There's rekindled enthusiasm here for many aspects of local history, from seafaring lure to the old wooden postcard buildings in the downtown section. The second reason is less abstract. It's solidly rooted in the manly sport itself. In last year's regatta, six oarsmen from a local plumbing house called Smith Stockley recorded an astounding time of 9.37, the finest in 40 years. A week before this year's regatta, in an unofficial practice heat, the Smith Stockley boys actually trimmed a second off the 913 record. The cruise coxswain is Jimmy Ring. He's nearly 70 now, and he's been involved in regattas for 52 years. This year, his crew is hungrier than ever. For three regattas now, Smith Stockley has been the crew to beat. For this year's derby, they started training last September, rowing twice a day, jogging up and down Signal Hill, pumping iron. Old regatta hand Jack Rudigan has never seen the like. They give up everything. They give up all their all their entertainment. They just come down here and spend six and seven hours a day in training, day after day since September and October. And this is continuous. I mean, they're really dedicated men this year in the past couple of years. Nothing interferes with rowing. This is their first love. But Smith Stockley has a serious rival this time out, a disciplined crew called Star of the Sea. The Star Boys also have been training fiercely, and in practice runs, they too have come within a whisker of the 913. The consensus is that the Star of the Sea crew will either threaten the record themselves or push Smith Stockley to it. At 10 a.m. on Regatta Day 81, Smith Stockley enters the general workers' race amid high excitement. Number three. Number three. 
Palm conditions are excellent. Many feel this has to be the moment. Rarely does a crew get two chances under these calm conditions. But in this race, Smith Stockley is virtually without competition. They aren't pushed. The crew rows hard and even, and they win the race hands down. But in these near perfect pond conditions, they finish in 9.15, two seconds shy of the record. You could cut the disappointment. Between important races, the St. John's Regatta becomes what it always has been, the working man's outing. An event described a century ago as having everything to please and renew the inner man. Little has changed at the Regatta. It remains the Lakeside Carnival, with a heavy emphasis these days on stuffed animals and low rent gambling. Until midday, the general feeling here was that Smith Stockley had blown their best shot at the record in the morning race. But as the next key race approaches at 2 p.m., the mood begins to shift. Instead of freshening, as everyone had expected, the wind actually has dropped. In this race, Smith Stockley will run head to head with the arch rival, Star of the Sea. Never had two regatta crews been better prepared. Crews are ready. St. John's Regatta is the only one in North America where the shells have fixed seats. It's also the only one where the crews must negotiate a 180 degree turn around boys at the halfway mark in the course. Rounding the boys, Smith Stockley have a minor problem, but their recovery is swift and sure. They've rounded the mark in four and a half minutes and threatened by the stare of the sea are hauling hell for leather up the pond. Suddenly, everybody knows what's happening. People come, come on, Smith Stockley. Where are they? Nine minutes, 901, 902, 903, the 913 may fall, 907, 908, 909, 910, 911. Yes, sir! 912, 24. The 913 and 4 fifths is broken. A record by the Smith Stockley crew. The 80 year old record during the rear. Yes, sir! 9, 12, 2, 4. A new record, 80 years gone. Jubilation is not the word, John Barrington stands up. The Smith Stockley crew have broken the record, 9, 12. A brand new record for the St. John's Regatta, 9, 12 point 04. The 9, 13 people coming out to the course in the water hugging. Order top right. The 80-year-old regatta record did not fall by accident. It fell to a dedicated crew, a crew with a willingness to train and the patience to wait five years. It was a record that was there for 80 years, and uh, everybody that ever rode knew about it and, and, and dreamed about it. And uh, we practiced hard for five years, really hard. And we finally, this year, that we knew we could do it, you know, and we, we did it. What was the Thank key, John? What was the key to it all that you managed to roll 9-12? Skipper, well, the skipper holding us together, that was the main big thing, right? And the, the hard work that we did, you know, everybody worked hard. Nobody ever uh, really th thought about how good we were. 
all we were interested in was getting better, and that's what we did. We, we, we rode hard and we worked hard all year, and that's, that's what happened. It paid off. Jimmy Ring waited a long time for this. He and the crew will collect $7,000 in prize money and seven gold medals struck in 1910. The medals cost $25 then. Now they're worth 10 grand. What was the key to you winning the race? Was it the little push you got from Star to see that you needed to win and get the 9-12? Well, it all boiled down to we were after the medals. We knew we could take the medals. But this prize is bigger than either medals or money. Like the Outerco fishermen of 1901, Jimmy Ring and the boys have rolled their way into the history books. St. John's and the St. John's Regatta will never be the same. I'm getting old and passing years now bring a fond regret All greasy bowls and old square dance and the things that men forget But my dying wish when I check off on a trip to Fiddler's Green Then fear is so for Jordan Rose, those men of 913 